This is Nadia on Mornings, ABC Radio Perth and WA. Now, uh, whatever the topic, whenever the topic of pill testing comes up, um, you quite often hear the same argument, and, and basically that is that it sends the wrong message to young people about party drugs. The concern has always been that if you offer a pill testing service at a music festival, people might take more drugs, not less, because it would give them a false sense of security that they are safe to use. That's the common argument. Well, that argument has been tested by Dr Stephen Bright at Edith Cowan University. He surveyed nearly 250 people at a WA Music Festival and he spoke to Rowanna on Breakfast This Morning about his findings. So what did your research find, I guess? Does pill testing encourage people to take drugs? Absolutely not. And this is based on my anecdotal experience of overseeing an unsanctioned trial in Victoria in 2017 where we saw people discarding drugs when it was identified that what they contained was not what people thought they contained. In fact, we identified that they may have contained potentially deadly compound, though we were using fairly rudimentary technology given it was an unsanctioned trial but having observed that my gut feeling was if we could get some hard data on this we could demonstrate that this line that that pill testing is going to give people the green light to use drugs is simply not true and it's based on other research that's occurred overseas that sort of supports it but we really went in with with an intention to, to test that and what we found was that people who are MDMA naive were no more likely to have an intention to use MDMA should there be pill testing on site or at a fixed site service. And similarly, people who currently engage in drug use are not going to use more drugs as a consequence of such a service being available. So it was essentially the same result for seasoned partiers and first-time drug takers? Exactly. So I want to dig into that a little bit further, I suppose, the psychology behind that, that that people don't necessarily need to be given a green light as such to take drugs? To me, young people are not stupid. They already know that taking an illicit compound has inherent risks associated with it. However, based on my experience in Victoria, when you have a service that's Uh, getting the word around that there's a potentially dangerous batch going around. When you have signage up at the festival saying, do not take this, you know, if if your pills look like this or you have a capsule um, containing a, a powder that looks like this, do not take it because it might kill you. It makes that risk a whole lot more real. And so for me, this argument that having on site services or fixed site services give people the green light to use drugs. Is, is completely flawed. It's similar to the argument that if we put seatbelts in cars, people will drive faster. Yeah, the findings um, for this one come about a year after a parliamentary inquiry recommended that trialling pill testing at, uh, to, to trial pill testing at festivals. That was a recommendation that was rejected by the McGowan government. When do you think pill testing will be trialled in, in Western Australia? Will it ever get there, Dr Bright? It absolutely will. However, what our research also found is that Western Australia is not ready at this stage for pill testing. Based on the responses of the participants of this study, the best predictor of whether they would engage or utilise a service on site at a festival was their peers' attitudes and, you know, what they thought about their peers seeing them access such a service. So... Given that um, really strong finding, it suggests that what we need in Western Australia is first education and harm reduction services at festivals. So in Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, they have services that go into festivals that work with paramedical services to look after people who are having a difficult time on drugs. And I guess it's similar to the idea of red red frogs, but for adults and with a focus on drugs. And so it takes pressure off paramedical services, so the paramedics love it. But more so, it builds credibility and trust in the community. And I think until we have that credibility and trust in the community, it would be premature to trial pill testing here. Because what I would hate to see in Western Australia is a trial of pill testing go ahead and it not be successful simply because Perth people or West Australians don't utilise it effectively.
That was Dr Stephen Bright from Edith Cowan University. He's a senior lecturer in addiction and his research has been published today. So what do you think? Does this convince you? Is it time to put pill testing back on the agenda? There's not really a political will to do this at the moment. I'd like to know what you think, uh, whether you are a young person that goes to these music festivals or a parent. Because I know parents are very, very worried about this. One three hundred triple two seven twenty. That is the number to call on the text if you prefer zero four three seven nine double two seven twenty. Now I've got to say, uh, it isn't popular with authorities. Certainly, politicians aren't really interested in in having a debate about this. Uh, WA police have been strongly opposed to it in the past. Um, the state government says that he does not have any plans to trial pill testing. Now, we've contacted the police again today, the Labor Party and the Liberal Party, to see if this research would change their minds or at least open up a conversation about it, but we have not heard back. So you tell me what you think. Let's have that conversation now. Uh, Joe Panea is from a group called Students for Sensible Drug Policy, and he joins me this morning. Hi, Joe. Hey, Nadia. How you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, pill testing. Would you like to see pill testing happen? Yes, very much so. Yeah, it's uh, an initiative that uh, most people that have got organised, uh, got involved with uh, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. It's pretty much the, the main reason why people are attracted to the group and, and why they want to get involved. Okay, what are, the, what are the benefits of it? Because what we hear a lot about is the concern that it will encourage uh, young people like yourself to take drugs. Yeah, look, um, the, the, that's the rhetoric that typically comes, around, comes out about this issue and I, I simply have to say that it's, it's not true. Um, more, more often than not, what, what this uh, initiative is meant to be put in place for is for the people that already decided that they're going to take drugs. And what, it, what it's meant to do is, is make that activity not even safer, just give them sort of an insight into um, what, to, what they're actually putting into their bodies. And if you were told, so, I mean, and you, uh, maybe you can draw on whether it's your own experience or the experience of your friends or whatever, but if you were actually told, look, I probably wouldn't recommend you take this one, how many people go, okay, and put it in the bin? Yeah, I think um, the, the vast majority of people. I, um, many years ago, I had a poor experience with um, taking uh, a pill and I later found out through uh, having a uh, surgery done on me that I was allergic to morphine and it, it struck me that this pill probably contained heroin and I had a really bad experience and if I was told before taking this drug that there was heroin involved in it and I knew that I was allergic to the, the, what made up the pill, then yeah, I definitely would not have taken it. Okay, and then Joe, let's look at the other scenario and that would be that you take a pill through and it gets tested and they tell you, look, there's this, this and this. Um, you know, what we expect to be in there, nothing like heroin or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you're going to get the experience of the high. We'd rather you didn't take it and there's the bin to put it in. Yep. Would you then go, okay, well, that's fine and go off and take it? Well, really, that's down to the individual mm -hmm. and the most important aspect of a pill testing service is that these people are actually put in touch with health professionals who can give advice on, look, this is an incredibly pure pill. Yes, it's got the substance in it that you're looking for, but we recommend you only take this much or this much if you're going to take it at all. would rather you not take it, but this is how to do so safely. So it puts them in touch with that um, sort of a, like a, a, it's like a barrier between taking too much or, or you know, um, you know, taking the wrong substance at all. Why do you think there's so much opposition to the idea? Um, I think, it, like you mentioned earlier, it's purely political. Um, there's, there's not a lot of public outcry for such a, a service and the stigma around drug use is, is very real. Um, so uh, young people especially, they're terrified of um, being caught out and having their potential careers ruined the rest of their lives sort of uh, are put in jeopardy. If they, they get caught by police or even their parents or whatever, they'll be booked upon as a as a drug user and stigmatised for the rest of their lives. So to actually activate these young people, to get them saying, hey, this is something that we want, we need to reduce that stigma and make it a, a, a sensible thing for, for people to go out and get their pills tested and a, and a safe thing for them to go out and get their pills tested. 13 past nine on ABC Radio Perth and WA. I'm talking with Joe Panea. He's the WA State Coordinator for Students for Sensible Drug Use. 
one three hundred triple two seven twenty. A lot of you want to talk about this, and I'm going to get to your calls in a minute. Um, before I let you go, though, Joe, um, the study also found that the biggest influence on a person's intention to use a pill testing service at a festival was how it was viewed among the friendship group. Um, does that surprise you? Um, no, not at all. Um, that takes me back to the, the comment I made about stigma. Um, yeah, if, if there's, say, a group of five or ten people and there's only two people who use drugs in this group, um, mm. that the stigma is very real for those two individuals. And if they're worried about what their friends think of them using a service or even using drugs in general, they will more often than not use whatever substances they've got in the background, they won't they won't tell anyone in the group, which is again very dangerous and damaging. If people don't know what is going on in their friend group, then the opportunity to intervene or um, help out when something goes wrong is, is just not there. We'll leave it there. Appreciate your time, Joe Panaya there from the Students for Sensible Drug Policy. You can phone now one three hundred triple two seven twenty or text oh four three seven nine double two seven twenty. And there is a Nadia on the phone. Good morning to you, Nadia. What do you think? Hi, Nadia. Um, well, essentially this reminds me or it makes me think of an analogy that while we all think that uh, abstinence is the ideal, it's an unrealistic thing. People use drugs and it makes me think of sex. So basically, if you were having sex, wouldn't you, or if your child was having sex, wouldn't you want them to have safe sex? You'd want to inform them, you'd want to supply them with the information, with the tools, condoms, whatever, to make sure that their experience was as safe as possible. It's the same with this. Kids will take drugs, adults will take drugs. Giving them a safer experience of that, I don't think makes them take more drugs. It just take, makes them take the drugs they would have in a more safe manner. They're going to do it anyway. Thank you, Nadia. Appreciate your input this morning. Paul, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Nadia. Uh, informed drug use. That's what I'm for. Why is that? Because they should know what they're taking so they don't have a bad trip or a bad tablet and it's helping them through life. Why not? All right, Paul, thank you very much. People are very, very clear on their views this morning. Damien, what do you think? I've got a couple of points, Nadia, really. Yeah. Um, with the politicians, the, the typical uh, wipe your hands issue with them as usual. Uh, with the police, they, they, they don't want to do it because there's no... Um, revenue involved in it. So basically, as I said to the lady when I called up, where, how are these kids getting educated in what they're taking without people telling them what they're taking? Yep, yep. You know? And what, trying to discourage them at the same time? Well, education starts at home, period, yeah. in life in general. But, you know, these, these, these are health professionals that are going to test these pills for these, for these individuals. So maybe they are telling them like the, the guy you're talking to is allergic to morphine. Yeah, that's okay, right. That, um, there's, there's heroin in there. So what is it? There's someone else that... I mean, people have died from taking ecstasy because it's been, has been laced with other things. Yeah, yeah. And no, uh, I thought that... Joe's story about that, I thought, was um, very telling indeed and really hit at home. Um, Damien, thank you so much. one three hundred triple two seven twenty is the number. Tim, good morning to you. Yeah, how you going? Um, I just think that the government needs to step out of the 1940s, 1950s attitude and get with the program. You know, the drugs on war, it's obviously not working. Marijuana has become a more acceptable and it's for the safety of the kids, you know. Um, I agree with all the other viewers. That it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, and, you know, it's, yeah, if, it, if things are legalised and slowly pushed towards a bit of education, then what's the world change? It's, um, and, Tim, yeah. do, you, do you have kids? Would you be comfortable with that scenario if it involved one of your children? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I would. I'd, I'd educate them as much as I could um, and I'd let them make their own decisions. Kids are going to do it no matter what. They're going to find a way. And synthetic drugs are more uh, more often than than they were years ago. So the dangers are even more... Yeah, it's so... Uh, I, I can't see a, yeah, a problem with it at all. And I'm, uh, Tim, thank you. And you are joining, uh, joining a, a chorus of people who are, are for pill testing. Uh, Joe on the text says, I'm a mother of three young adults and believe pill testing should have been in place a long time ago. Any measure to keep our kids safe and informed about what they may potentially be consuming is a no-brainer for me. Drugs exist and people experiment. So let's grow up, take a deep breath and face reality. Uh, George, what do you think? Well, I think it's a simple case of I mean, I'm a smoker. They're a legal product, and yet I'm banned from smoking just about anywhere. And yet these kids can go to these concerts and buy illegal drugs. 
you've got to have it one way or the other. Either make them all legal and let them have their drugs and me smoke, or keep them the way they are. And the government's making enough money out of cigarettes, so why should these young kids have to be allowed to take illegal drugs? George, thank you very much. Uh, I'll finish up for now, but I can take some more calls on this after 10 o'clock. David, I'll, I'll finish up for now with you. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Nadia. Yes, I just uh, wanted to say that uh, I was listening to a younger generation talk about the drug drug uh, accidents and um, sicknesses and that happening near concerts, and they pointed out that there was never a problem when they were going to concerts, but they, by bringing sniffer dogs, people were dumping two or three tablets at a time before the concert rather than going in and having one uh, here and there spaced out. Yep, thank you very much for that. And uh, Susie says, I've no idea why we're not making drug taking safer. People will take drugs if they're illegal or not. We should be promoting education in this matter, not denying access to safety. Uh, as I said, plenty of time for your calls on this after 10 o'clock on 1300 222 720. Um, it's 19 past nine.